There's this one. What stereotypes do others have about you that bother you? Um, I Welcome to my channel. My name is Jess from Jess Insight and today I'm really really excited to get started to reintroduce myself and also do the updated get to know me Q&A tag for 2023. I thought I'd do this just to make sure that you guys understand who you're watching, what I'm about, vice versa, because sometimes when you start on the YouTube channel and you fall off and you come back and you're trying to come back with consistency, you just want to make sure that people know who you are and what they're following. So decided to at least do that today and let's get started. Well, the first question is, what song do you listen to when you get sad? Um, I don't actually have a song that I, I need to pump myself up when I'm sad. I actually like to wallow in my sadness. Like it's not like a depression thing. It's not something that I feel super down or it drags me like I have to be in that season for me to get through it if that makes sense like I really have to understand why I'm going through this why am I sad what is the reason because if I don't know the reason it's gonna happen again okay so for me I have to actually understand go through why I'm going through that and I actually do have a song for that I do have a song when I'm when I'm like really frustrated most of the time a lot of my uh, reasons why I listen to the song is because I'm not letting go. I'm not, I'm trying to take control. I'm not letting God have his way. So for me, I love this song. Um, it's part of, it's by Kalante Gavin. It's um, his mashup that he did on um, he did on a show, award show. I can't think of it, but it was the, the one on YouTube. Um, I really, wow, I really can't think of it, but basically it was a mashup is between testimony and let go. So I like the second half where it says, let go, let God. I'll play a little bit. Still have a plan. And the it's working for your good. My next question is, what is your go-to outfit? Period. My go-to outfit, if you don't know already, is basically a midi dress. Midi dress with heels. Um, something that is printed um, is great. Some kind of like graphic design. Like you see a lot of my mini dresses, midi dresses that have like giraffe spots or like, you know, classy and sassy. That's that's where we're at. So we drop an example there. But usually my go-to outfit is a midi dress with heels. If I don't have heels, I have a, a sneaker with a um, wow. Wow, can I think of it? Uh, if I have those shoes, I have that with a like cross bag, um, cross body bag over. So that's typically what I'm wearing. So that's my, I would say that's definitely my go-to outfit. What's your proudest moment? My proudest moment, honestly, of my life, that's actually really hard because I feel like there's been a lot of moments that I've been like super proud of myself, but I would say there's more moments that I'm proud of others. I was really proud of my sister who got her master's, master's degree. I was really proud of my older sister, um, you know, got something that she's been praying for. I, I was really proud of my brother when he broke the school's record for track and field um, and boys and triple. And I was in, um, I'm still the girls in triple. So it was really cool to have our names right next to each other at our old high school. There was a lot of different moments that I'd say I'm very, very proud of the people I'm surrounded by and their accomplishments. I feel like sometimes a lot of people look at me and they think I'm I'm self-involved or I do this, I do that. Um, that's cool and all, but in reality, I actually really care for those who share their dreams with me and I love seeing how they make the steps forward because I really like to celebrate their wins. So for me, like that's probably like my proudest moments is actually my friends and family's moments because I saw what they went through to get to where they are. So for me, that's that's probably my proudest moments in life. Like if I actually think back to different moments, there I'm being proud of someone else, if that makes sense. What is your favorite sport to play and why? Honestly, I my favorite to, to watch is football, but to play, wow. <laughs> Flag football is probably the latest thing I've played, and I actually really do enjoy that. It's just I get tired easily now in my back, and so, um, yeah, I would say flag football, but now in my new season of life, it's probably bowling because that's easier. 
except they hurt my nails. So we'll fi we're figuring that out. We're figuring that out, whatever that is. If you knew you were going to die tomorrow, what would you do today? Um, honestly, I would just be with the Lord and I would be with my family. Um, for me, like, that everyone dies and so that's not um, anything new. But for me, I probably would just spend time with my loved ones as much as possible and, you know, be ready to, to meet God and, and see them there. So that would be the only thing I would do today. Um, I wouldn't go crazy. I feel like I've... I feel like the people that go nuts, like, oh, I'm going to do everything I ever wanted. Like, I don't live my life that way. Like, I already am trying to do whatever I feel necessary to give me satisfaction in this life. And for me, like, I'm not waiting to do that. I'm not waiting to go travel. I'm not waiting to um, get married to do certain things. Like, for me, I'm going to live my life now. And I'm not going to need someone to tell me that I'm, you know, life is done the day after tomorrow for me to go try to live it. Does that make sense? Like, you should already be doing that. And so for me, I wouldn't be rushing around trying to, you know, go cliff dive or like do random things. For me, it'd be just about spending that time with family and being spiritually prepared to, um, you know, meet God. What stereotypes do others have about you that bother you? Um, I wouldn't say anything bothers me because it is what it is and you can't please anybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but stereotypes I would say that someone would have against me would be I probably look a little like cold hearted a little bit to people on the first chance of them meeting. I wouldn't say like cold hearted but you know what I mean? Like I have that resting face that like is she nice? Is she not nice? Like I feel like a lot of people think I am a certain way which I don't really mind because the way I do my makeup the way my face just naturally sets like I feel like I come off a little where people are just like a little scared to approach me or see what I'm gonna say or feel like I'm like selfish or feel like I'm about myself or a little like I am the price so for me I have a little bit sometimes of a cocky attitude sometimes I have a bit of a um I'm going to do what I need to do, but I think for me, like, some people kind of almost take the attitude as I think I'm better than everyone. That's not the case. I'm saying that I am the best person I, the person I'm presenting you is the best person I believe in. So that doesn't mean that I think I'm better than you. If that's how you choose to take it, that's on you. But for me, the way I present myself is that I am the best. I'm the best at what I do. I'm the best in the field I am. I am the best at what I want to achieve creatively, professionally, uh, personally, uh, financially. I want to be in the best in that regards in, to me. So if I present myself that certain way and some people take it a different way, it is what it is. But I would say that doesn't like bother me per se. But I know that's a perspective that some people have of me. Hopefully <laughs> that wasn't a long-winded answer. Um, how would you define success? Honestly, I would define success as essentially, honestly, I would just define success as being able to do what you would like to do every single day. That's it. Whether that is you working your nine to five and being super happy in that, whether it's being creative and going full time creative, or if it's doing, you know, drawing um, day in and day out, it's having the ability to do what you want and do what you love to do day in and day out. So I think for me that defines success and um, being able to do that is unparalleled to have that flexibility to do that. So I think that would define success for me is to at the end of the day decide what is best for me day to day to do to make myself happy. Explain yourself in a relationship. Honestly, I think for me, I'm actually a very giving person to the right person. And I think I am someone that does am considerate of others and actually care a lot more than people think. And I definitely have like a um, mentality of like if if you're bringing in 150 percent I'll bring in 150 percent so I match the energy that is given and for me if you don't come correct I won't come correct or even bother so for me I think that's like the tip of the iceberg and how I am in most um, situations so yeah I would say I'd say that's that what movie have you watched the most and why? Honestly, this is so embarrassing. Um, is it embarrassing? 
I don't know if it's embarrassing, but um, the movie that I have watched the most is honestly Mulan. Um, it was one of the first movies ever that I've watched. I Most people would think I would say my favorite movie, which is She's the Man, which is my favorite movie, 1000%. But I actually watch Mulan the most. Honestly, it's just, I just love the story. I, I play as background noise. I I watch between the, the um, you know, the classic Mulan 1, Mulan 2 on Disney+, Plus, the animated versions, and I've watched the real life version as well, which I actually like. I, I don't know why I got so much hate. I don't know why I got so much hate, but I honestly don't think it's that bad, and I really, like, kind of enjoy it. So, I mean, I don't know why there are so many haters about the Mulan movie, but I did not mind it at all. I thought it was a good movie, and that's what I mean good movie I did not say great it was a good movie and I enjoy it it's great background noise it's good to to have something kind of real who doesn't love I mean who doesn't love female empowerment right like who doesn't love that and so Mulan was kicking butt and taking names and we love that for her we actually love that for her so that was probably the biggest thing that I saw that I really really loved um and that's why I watched that movie a lot because it just means a lot to me it means childhood to me and gives me a lot of like nostalgia so I really really do love love Mulan. You can eat one type of food for the rest of your life what would it be? If you don't know this do you really follow me? Are you really following me? <laughs> um, if you don't know I actually have a lamb chop page at lamb of jess I'm gonna plug it right here definitely go give it a like and follow but basically lamb chops on my bread and butter okay literally love it love it love it I would probably choose to eat that to be honest I definitely would choose to just eat that and I'll be fine honestly I'd be really really fine um and live life what is more important the journey or the destination honestly for me if you were gonna ask me about two to three years ago I'd probably say the destination only because if you have goals and you say you're gonna get there you better get there I don't care how you get there, you need to get there. If I say by this month you need to be here, just get there. So for me, like I really had that like almost aggressive personality. But I feel like now I'm definitely more about the journey. And I mean the journey now is working smarter and not harder. Don't bend your back when there's so much information out there to help you get to where you need to be. That, that is free, that's accessible, there's YouTube, there's podcasts, there's um, social media, there's different things, resources online that you can go and educate yourself about a particular topic and get to where you need to be to be qualified. If there's something that you're lacking, if you need to go to school, if you need to you know, get a certificate, there's so many things out there that will help you educate yourself to take you to the next level. And for me, that journey and getting that knowledge to make yourself a sharper toolbox, to have the skills that you need is impeccable and I really really appreciate that not to say the journey is still not going to journey or the destination is still not going to destinate because when you hit that finish line there's nothing greater no greater feeling than being proud of the work that you put in to get to where you are but I would definitely say the journey makes it so much sweeter because of the way you applied yourself and held yourself accountable so I would say that is the biggest biggest part um, this is a weird question. It says, what would you, would you want to be a guy or girl in your next life or why? Um, I'm really happy the way God made me. So I'm going to stay a girl and I'm going to be an even flawless, um, person. So, but I mean, I don't really believe in reincarnation like that. So, um, I would definitely say I don't want to be anyone else but myself. Well, that's all I have for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe already if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.